Hi guys, let's start with my cat, Jim Cat. He's right here. Hello, buddy. You doing okay? You doing all right? What's new with you? I'm training every day since December 9th of last year. I'm on like day 160, 170 something. And it's not working. So in a previous video, you guys were showing a lot of concern for me and I listened. Take me to the gym. Okay. So here's the thing. I haven't deloaded because I thought it was against the rules. What are the rules? What are the rules? But I've been putting a lot of workouts and that have kind of been like recovery workouts here and there, but they're not working because they're not consolidated into like a block of time. And I knew this, I knew you're supposed to take off back off weeks. I knew you're supposed to consolidate rest periods. Wow, what do you want? This is what most people do. So X means training Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You know, they train, they rest. They train, they rest. And it's not smart because they never really take a deload. Smart lifters take a deload every like four to eight to 10 weeks or something, especially for competition because, well, competition. So this is the smart way to do that. So pretty much the same thing except for here, they just do pretty much nothing. See the difference? Okay, now watch this. This is what I'm doing. This is also what I'm doing. This doesn't work. But the details of what I've really been doing is in here. And what actually is a training session? Because a training session can be light, medium, or hard. And the thing I found is that if you do this every day and you modulate between light, medium, and hard, and let's say you do a string of light days. Let's say all of these days are light, all right? See, I'm color coding it. They're blue now, right? Light is blue, is blue. I'm trying to make a point here. My point is that it doesn't matter still because the amount of stress you have and other things you do, the, the body doesn't know the difference between heavy deadlifts and uh, heavy gardening, for example. So come out here and check out my garden real quick. My garden is doing really, really well. This is, uh, these are two weeks worth of gains and I've already been harvesting a lot of this basil right here. Look at this wonderful it smells good you can't smell it through the screen but you can try stick your nose up to the screen do it when I planted this it did take about four hours worth of work maybe I'm a slow gardener but I would just really wanted to do a good job doing it and I did the gardens great but it was physical labor and now ever since we moved out here and me and Tom have been working together there's a lot of foot traffic I do a lot of people handling uh, guests hosting materials traveling all sorts of things we're doing it's, it's on another level and that's 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 wearing me down too so the thing is that even when i've been taking off these days here and there it hasn't been enough but i haven't taken a deload still i color coded it for you light medium hard this is really probably about the best representation of what i've been doing it's still every day and this is what i really need if i'm training every day i still need to do nothing here because because this isn't working but I can't do that because my goal is to train every day. I have been complaining about it a lot because training every day is not very good. But since I'm, I'm almost halfway, if you were halfway and your goal was to compile an entire book about the whole thing when you're done, would you quit? No, but I do actually want to be a good athlete. So in order to do that, I have to figure out sort of a, a workaround and you guys have helped me do that. You guys, Thank you very much for the support and the ideas. This is what I'm gonna do. Stupidly light. Okay. No, no, no. And that's what I need to do. Every chance that I needed to do something physical for a video or to work out with a guest, do you really think that if Larry Wheels came here, you were gonna have your deload week? No, you'd be maxing out with the guy too. But it looks like I have a clear week ahead and so this is what I'm gonna do I am going to make something so stupidly light that it still counts as a workout but it's a complete waste of time so I'm going to show you some of the things that I've come up with based on some of your ideas uh, in order to achieve training every day status without doing anything that's actually useful
So, how about five sets of 10 back squats with 135 pounds? Does that count as training? Because it's pretty light. Interestingly enough, I did that the other day and it made my groin really sore. Why? I keep having to come back to my definition of what training is. So for this train every day for a year thing, what counts as training? My definition is that it's 45-ish minutes of physical effort directly related to achieving training goals. So even though four hours of gardening thrash my body more than five sets of 10 back squat with one plate on each side, it doesn't count as training. And interestingly enough, I was trying to do the five sets of 10 back squat with a light weight to kind of give my body active rest because that counts as training, but it actually made me sore. So you have to be pretty creative. A lot of times what you think isn't really stressing your body when you train is. I'm actually pretty proud of it. I got some cool things on it. This is one of my favorite new toys. It's a jigsaw massage. You take a jigsaw and you attack muscles with it. Anyone that's ever had a good massage knows that it could really make your muscles effed up for days. So it does count as training because it's physical effort directly related to achieving physical training goals, but it's really not a good form of rest because it does make you sore and your body needs to recuperate from that in order to actually get better. We have a grip wall over here. It is, uh, it's getting better. I'm expanding it. Right here, I'm gonna be putting some artwork. It's gonna be a giant painted hand, but Grip work is pretty good because it'll only make your forearm sore, and, uh, but it can be pretty stressing in your CNS. See, the thing is, muscle recovery is one thing, but you also have to let your nervous system recover. That's, that's part of recovery. <laughs> this anvil lift here for grip, it's not really, uh, it's not the same thing as hitting all your muscles like a deadlift or something that's loaded on your spine, like a front squat, a back squat, or a yoke or anything, but you can still do it pretty intense. So do you just modulate your workouts based on like how hard you're trying, like rate of perceived exertion? Like, do I do it like really light or something? Things are a lot simpler when you can just take rest days and not do anything because it all balances out better. See, I just talked about training squats for five sets of 10 with a lightweight, which is essentially the example I did here with the anvil lift, and that made me sore, right? And so even if I do a high intense sets of grip training, it's still gonna fry my CNS just, just a little bit. And we're not even talking about the elephant in the room, which is taxes. What counts as training? Taxes, taxes, taxes. Taxes, it does, that doesn't count as training, but it just, it just pisses all over your training goals. What else pisses all over your training goals? Stuff. I mean, just in general, stuff. Yeah, I want to lift a 400 pound stone for a double aerial switch. See, ah, it doesn't matter. Just stuff is getting in the way of, uh, you know, training goals. So we go back over here, we take a look at our week. We're trying to plan out how to do a deload while training every day, and we still have stuff. Part of the solution is to take care of the stuff that's stressing me outside of training. And part of the solution is actually figuring out which workouts are actually the type of workouts that count as training but have like no impact on my body. So we're talking about like useless training sessions. And it's not that simple. It's not just, hey, dude, just train light for a week. It's not just like, hey, just do some lower the weight on the bar, go through the motions. It's not just do grip, do calves. Those are not bad ideas, but I think it's really, it's more specific than just train lighter or do uh, less work or lighter muscle groups. It's really about specific types of things. So I'm gonna get on the rowing machine in this banana outfit and do 10 minutes of work. What I'm discovering on my way to finishing training every day for an entire year is that not 
all light exercises are created equal. 15 minutes of light rowing is easier than 15 minutes of light back squatting. So the key is not to categorize things based on muscle group, type, intensity level, but take it on an exercise by exercise basis. Let's go slacklining. I do have a slack line set up back here. You've seen it in some videos. I'm not good at it. I don't train it regularly. I've never made progress on it, but I like to do it sometimes. I mean, I would imagine it would help my balance, but in this case, slacklining is actually pretty easy, so I think this is a pretty good choice over other things. work now so I'm gonna stop I'm getting exhausted and I'm supposed to be deloading hmm. guys thank you for commenting and helping me and supporting me on my quest to train every single day for a year straight very much appreciate you guys for subscribing as well if you haven't subscribed please subscribe it would mean a lot to me and any, any other thoughts or ideas you have in your head, uh, leave them in the comment section below because we check them and we respond. We're not like a lot of other guys that just uh, completely ignore the comment section. So I'm going to go eat, which is a whole other can of worms to talk about in terms of recovery. So I'm leaving and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.